Thank you very much, uh, Gordon, Your Excellencies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I bring greetings from uh, Commissioner Fuller, who would very much uh, have wished to be with us today, but uh, was prevented for reasons of uh, transport difficulties in, in being with us today. In five minutes, I'd like to talk mostly about the challenges facing, on the one side, the member states of the European Union, and on the other side, the candidates and potential candidates. I'll try and speak in shorthand to some extent to remain within the uh, time limits. In a very synthetic form, I would say that the main challenge facing the existing member states with respect to the enlargement agenda is to maintain support of public opinion and uh, political elites in their countries for the enlargement process against the background of the economic, financial, and sovereign debt crisis. Contrary to public uh, beliefs, we've actually been more successful in that than would at first meet the eye. And those who are following this process know that in uh, conclusions after conclusions of the European Council, of the Council of Ministers, there has been a firm commitment to the enlargement process, notwithstanding the ups and downs of public opinion. Nonetheless, all member states have to cope with public opinion, and there's no doubt that in the existing economic climate, there are doubts, fears, and uncertainties with respect to the enlargement process, whether focused on issues like the rule of law, the question of jobs, fears about the dislocation of industry, uh, migration, and other such matters. To respond to these, I think it's particularly important that the EU itself, its institutions, its leaders, and its member states make a point of explaining to the public why enlargement remains in the interests of the European Union and its member states. This ought to be self-evident, but indeed is not, and public opinion is often confused on the matter. To be sure, the broad explanations in terms of security, stability, and the need to get back to economic growth and to preserve economic stability remain valid. But these broad points are not necessarily meaningful to a young generation, particularly those who are too young to have ever known, thankfully, war on our continent, and therefore may not be wholly convinced by arguments in terms of peace, stability, and security. These arguments remain valid, but I think it's important today to demonstrate why it is that the enlargement process also helps the European Union to attain its own objectives. Sitting here in Dubrovnik, looking at the map of Europe, I think this is abundantly evident. Southeast Europe, particularly the countries of the Western Balkans, are entirely surrounded by member states. This has sometimes been described as an inner courtyard within the existing European Union. And therefore, for us to achieve objectives which are crucial to the 2020 agenda, which are crucial to getting us back on our feet fully uh, economically, addressing such issues as climate change, energy, environment, transport, it is self-evident that the um, enlargement process the assistance we're offering, our work together with the EIB, the EBRD, helps not only the countries of the region, but also the EU to attain its objectives. This is something which I think requires constant reiteration and demonstration to the public. At the same time, to keep public opinion on board, it's important for us to demonstrate that we stick to our principles. And uh, a main principle is that countries advance towards the EU based on their own individual merits and their success in addressing the conditionality that has been established. I think this is important for our member states and public opinion as it is for the countries themselves. So this, I would say, is the first challenge for our own member states, maintaining support and explaining to public opinion why this process remains important. Our second major challenge is to demonstrate to our partner countries, the candidates and potential candidates, tangible and credible benefits on the route to membership along the way, not just when the final goal is achieved, but step by step as reforms begin to bite. 
there, I think the success that we have had in the field of visa liberalization is a case in point because it demonstrates clearly that when there's a clear agenda, a clear set of benchmarks and conditions that have been set and countries are successful in addressing those benchmarks, the EU delivers, even though the issue may be a highly sensitive one in public opinion. And the fact that there are no longer visa requirements for, for Croatia, for three other countries in this region, that the Commission has proposed also the elimination of uh, visa obligations for Albania and Bosnia and Herzegovina is a demonstration of this. And I think we need to be creative and imaginative along the way also to deliver other benefits which are tangible to the public as reform objectives are achieved. For the candidates and potential candidates, the main challenge, I believe, is to maintain the momentum of the reform process and to demonstrate to public opinion in these countries that these reforms are important both for moving towards membership in the European Union and for modernization and development within the countries themselves. This means not only meeting uh, formal requirements in terms of adopting legislation, but also, as has often been said, and at least as important, developing the administrative capacity, the institutions needed to implement and enforce the acquis properly. Of key importance, of course, is addressing the political criteria for membership in moving forward in the process. This too has two sides, particularly within this region. Issues such as the political criteria, um, issues concerning cooperation with the International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague are important both for moving towards the EU and for reconciliation within the region. Secondly, um, the rule of law is a fundamental question in this region and again has two sides to the medal. The first side is that the EU is itself a community of law and therefore the rule of law is crucial in preparing for membership. This is a matter not only of action plans and strategies, important though they are, but once again, actual delivery in practice. The other side of the medal of rule of law issues, again, concerns our own public opinion. And it is by showing seriousness in such matters, reform of the judiciary, fight against organized crime and corruption, that um, the brand, so to speak, of the candidates and potential candidates in public perceptions in our own countries can become a strong one, and public support in our own member states can be reinforced. So maintaining the momentum of reform, addressing in particular rule of law questions, addressing administrative reform uh, issues, and of course, taking seriously the question of bilateral issues. Here, as has been said several times in this conference, the success of Slovenia and Croatia in overcoming their difficulties with support from the European Union is a, a model to be followed throughout the region. The principle of good neighborly relations is a crucial one along the path to EU membership and remains a priority. Governance issues need to be addressed as a priority. I'm looking at the watch and I'm speaking in shorthand, so please forgive me, but it's clear that in several partner countries, such crucial issues as political dialogue, maintaining the quality of political dialogue, of course, debate and differences on key issues are fundamental to democracy. At the same time, uh, civility and uh, respect, and in particular, maintaining the quality of the political dialogue on issues related to EU membership is absolutely fundamental. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, governance issues take on uh, major proportions, and from an EU perspective, the key priorities are addressing the conditions for the withdrawal of the OHR and after the elections moving towards constitutional reform both to take into account the judgment of the European Court of Human Rights and to prepare the country for EU membership. Finally, as has been said several times at uh, this conference, the need to be serious about regional cooperation, both to deliver concrete results in areas like transport and energy and trade we know also that energy shortages have on occasion held back economic development in the region. So it's not just a matter of principle, 
that regional cooperation deserves support, it is also necessary to bring concrete results. But this is also important as a precursor to EU membership, as the demonstration of the capacity and will to cooperate with one's neighbors is a demonstration that in the future, the countries concerned will be ready to take on the rights and obligations of EU membership. If I had more time, I would give a, a brief rundown of our progress with the different members, the different partner countries in the region. I don't have time for that, but suffice it to say that there has been a lot of uh, forward movement since the last Croatia summit. Not only is Croatia reaching the final stages in the negotiations and demonstrating that all the principles I've mentioned so far actually do bring results as has been said by Goran, a demonstration to other countries in the region that this is not just political talk, but can become um, a reality. We have applications for membership by several countries. We're working on opinions uh, for Albania and Montenegro. We're ready to start working on an opinion on Serbia uh, as soon as uh, we are asked to do so by the member states. We are taking steps to ensure that Kosovo moves towards the European Union in parallel with the region, notwithstanding the obvious political challenges that uh, it still faces. And with Turkey, uh, as has been demonstrated at the most recent intergovernmental conference, despite many challenges uh, on both sides, which need to be taken seriously and addressed, we have managed to maintain the rhythm of the negotiations to open yet another chapter and I'm confident that under the Belgian presidency, we will make further progress. I'm at eight minutes, so I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention.